The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien, coming to you live from TFNN. Thanks for starting your trading day off right here at TFNN. We check out the markets, and we got positive territory to kick things off. The S&Ps, as we talked about in the update, positive territory. Back at about the 50%, you drive higher on some of the economic numbers we got this morning. Jobless claims coming in at 205,000. Boy, it's a healthy number. 205,000 initial jobless claims. They were looking for 215. We'll pull up the chart in a moment, but that's a very healthy number. If we're getting over inflation, if the Fed is going to be able to pull back and potentially cut, the market's thinking maybe it happens in March. Meanwhile, the economy is very healthy. There's no extreme measure in terms of initial jobless claims. I mean, you get a healthy churn of maybe 200, 250,000 on a weekly basis. That's just the market, a healthy churn. And nonetheless, we're still under that number when possibly we've pulled back inflation. Pretty remarkable that that may be the case, but that seems to be the case right now, man. s and is up by 34, NASDAQ 100. We're up by a full percent on the dot. We hit the 618 of the move lower yesterday on the NASDAQ 100. The Dow right now, we just got to 37,700. We're trading at 37,652. Dow is up half a percent. You get the Russell up 1.1 percent and the NASDAQ up a percent and the s and is right now just off that number at seven tenths in the positive. All right, let's jump over to that jobless claims. Here we go. And this is the chart to take a look at. So initial jobless claims is in black here, and the four-week average is in red. And pretty remarkable what's happened in terms of as inflation – think about where we were in February, March – Right, the potential with okay, we're doing 230, we're doing 240, we're jumping around, we're well above 250. The four week average almost reached 260 on initial jobless claims number. And listen, this is not the most important data point of the month, but it's the data point of this morning, and the market's taking it and running with it. The trend is lower, man. As inflation has come down, I mean, look, you could argue that the trend is lower since the beginning of March or February on the initial jobless claims basis. Now, continuing claims is a little bit of a different story, okay? But think about how inflation has come down over the period of March to December, and then realize at the same time that inflation has come down, less people are losing their jobs. It's not more people that's causing market weakness. Remarkable um, to see that happening. Yeah, the four-week average is sitting at 212000 You had gross domestic product growing at 4.9%. That was also out at 830 Less than previously estimated, 52 Personal consumption, which accounts for about two-thirds of the economy, advanced at a downwardly revised 3.1% pace. And uh, yeah, a key gauge of underlying inflation increased at a 2% annualized pace in the July to September period. Yeah, reinforcing that potential Fed pivot. So you get that data at 830, man. We get a little bit of a reversal of yesterday's action. We're back below the 4,800 price point right now. You get the NASDAQ 100 up 171 points. And as I say that, what else we have? Pulling up yields. Come on, cooperate. There we go. We're now under 3.85%. Under 3.85%. Now, we were just above 5%, right? And this is on a 10-year basis. But we were just above 5%. The 10-year right now is sitting at 3.85%, just under that number. So we've dropped 1.2% approximately, almost a, a point and a quarter, right? Keep that in mind as expectations go forward because we're nearing the area that seeing the 10-year decrease more than that right now is factoring a lot of acceleration of these cuts at a time when – the market seems pretty healthy, and there's no reason why they should rapidly have to cut to that degree. I don't know. Um, I say that, but then we pull up the 10-year, and maybe we got to get back on a longer-term basis right now to 
to this move that we had lower, which is 117. And you're probably going to push the upper boundary of where this thing moved to at the beginning of this year, which is maybe the 114, 115 range to, I mean, you had volume in March, right? And the high on March, 117.01. Where did we get to in May before we traded lower? 117. Where may we go right now? Possibly 117. And where are we right now? 113. So that's still four more full points that we could go to. Yeah. Pretty remarkable when you got the 10-year trading at 3.85%. And it looks like on the charts right now, at least, that you're saying that you got four points that you could go up. And that just gets back to where we were in May. We have a lot more data than what we had in May. And things seem a lot better than what they were in May in terms of the prognosis for potential cuts, when they're going to begin. The market got ahead of itself at that point, if you remember. The Fed did not get ahead of itself at that point in May. This is a different scenario. The Fed is out there now. The market is doing the work with these interest rates, okay? But the chairman's words were strong. The dot plots were pretty strong. They put out their feelings, and it would make sense. It'd be pretty reasonable, actually, just to get back to where we were. I mean, look where we are right now. On the 10-year, we were trading at higher price for a lot of earlier this year, right? We were trading at a higher price in the 10-year from May 22nd to March 6th and at the beginning of the year as well. So it seems like we got to make it above at least 114 area. Where's that low from April 17th? Yeah, about 114, 113.30 and a half. So call it 114 which is at least a full point above where we're at right now. Maybe that's the first area you face a little resistance. And then you're going to be in this kind of area of chop from the beginning of the year. Remarkable, nonetheless. All right, what else we got going on? Check out this story. All right, we'll kick it off. We have a few things to talk about, but it's December 21st. You got four days until Christmas. I'm not, not even a little bit last night and I was surprised how many items last night were giving you the last opportunity before something gets delivered on December 4th. Now, different addresses have different deliverable, deliverable timelines uh, but nonetheless uh, uh, BERT they're going bankrupt Okay, wait till you see this chart folks once valued at $2.5 billion we live in exceptional times in the market man and you know I find myself saying what a time to go IPO, okay? Now, they really pushed this. I think, was this a SPAC potentially, and this thing went out November of 2021, I think is possibly what happened. I'm not sure what, what, what's going on on this chart, but this is birds. They're going BK. They were trading, it looks like, what? Were they trading at 50 cents yesterday? And they're No, they were trading at 8 pennies yesterday. No, they were trading at 50, 42 pennies, and then they dropped down on the BK to 6 pennies or something like that. You pull this chart back, folks, and this is the, where it went public November 1st. Now, I was trying to find even some stories on this or something of when. Um, nonetheless, once we're at $2.5 billion, right? That's what the story says. Um, and they have a stocking horse agreement, which sets a floor for the value with its existing lenders. It's going to use bankruptcy. And it's going to facilitate a sale of their asset. I mean, just be careful when these companies go in public, man. We'll talk about some of the other action out there. Jeez. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years 
years' experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Welcome back, folks. We get the S&Ps up 33, NASDAQ 100 up 156. I was looking up this again during the break because it is remarkable when you see something like this. You try and learn from something like this, right? I want to understand how something like this happens, where it gets pushed out to the public, as it did in November. Now, this thing had a 1 for 25 reverse stock split. Usually, charts that go from this level, nonetheless, when it was went IPO, and it went IPO at about a stock share price of about $8. It reversed stock split one for 25 in may of this year may 18th of this year now that's the last part we want to talk about here you were up to eight bucks man in april of this year okay in may yeah right around here this thing was trading at three dollars at that time this is post split okay and yeah it's at pennies now and it was one-way trip be careful folks getting into a stock that needs to reverse split one for 25 um, many times the momentum is to the downside when that's happening. You want to throw some capital in there that you don't mind risking where it's a 100% loss, then go for it. But when you're throwing capital into a stock that's trading at $3 and they just did a reverse split, one for 25, and this is what the chart looks like, and you're getting into it at $3 and it just went from effectively 250 be careful. And be careful on some of those IPOs, man. What a time to push paper out to the public November of 2021 do you remember where the market was in November of 2021 folks right there right the market went from a COVID low of 2100 up to 4800 and you got companies like birds pushing IPOs out to the public at a value of 2.5 billion dollars when in reality within 24 months that company is worth zero not exactly going over the technicals, but it's something to think about when you see some of those numbers and the hysteria. Now, you go to this market, okay? Think about that some of those forces getting eliminated in the market, right? We're back at new highs, and you've had many stocks that struggled really taking a beating over that time, pulling back. Basil's webinar last right, night, right? Making lows in 2023, charging higher ready for even more in the coming years you've gotten rid of the bad ones and the ones that actually made it and survived are ready to go higher i think i mean boy it's quite a case man i was looking at this market last night 
And it feels like there's potential ABCs, man, that can be rocking higher. I mean, look at Amazon. Amazon's got $35 that it could go to the upside, and it's just pushing highs right now. There's room on many great equities right now to valuations. Amazon, that's not a spike high I'm talking about. I'm talking about a high of 175 That's 23 Dollars where we're above right now. That's a 15% rise, and that's where Amazon just traded to a high for a period of a year, from September of 2020 all the way to December of 2021. Remarkable. Now, you jump over to Microsoft. I mean, what if we're ever experiencing something like an A to B, C to D? And I'm not cherry picking 2018 to to 2021. Okay, I'm just really talking about even the acceleration we've had this year. You know, look at Microsoft, man. It goes from 215, an A point. Your B point, 366. That's 150 point A to B leg. Okay, now watch this. And your C point is 315, which if you get an A to B leg off 315, you're talking about 465, which is almost a. 100 points above where Microsoft is trading at right now. And all that's getting is an A to B move that we had at the beginning of the year and starting that move that we just had in October. And if you don't think it can happen, we just traded from 311 to 384. You just traded 70 points higher or so. And we need another 100 points from where we're trading at right now over a period of, I mean, what? That took almost a full year. And we've only been in this run for about two months. So we got 10 months that we could do it. We did 70 points in two months. We'd need 10 months to do 100 points. Nonetheless, you get the point. And those are in a few different equities. Let's take this off. We're going to take a look at Google. Yeah, almost made it to the 318 in terms of the pullback. I mean, Google, you're talking about 85 up to about 140. That's $55. You take the C point of 120, that's 175. Right? I found myself looking at these last night saying, man, what if that is the A to B C to D portion and we are within the C to D leg? No. All right. Let's see if it goes even further than that. What if this is a small ABCD, which in Microsoft I just said takes you up to what, 460? What did I say we got? From 215, got 150 points, 460, 460 or so. And what if we get the A point of 130 to 350? That's 220, that brings you up to 440. I mean, what if the A, there's there's two ABCs almost, right? And look at the pullback. The COVID lows up to the late 2021 highs on Microsoft. You pull back to the 618. If we replicate the move we had. <laughs> and can you imagine if you had said to somebody in a year ago, November, that we're going to have, that that's an A to B leg. How many would have believed you that we had a run potentially in Microsoft coming of 220 points, which would be a 100% move from where it was at. But that's your A to B leg, man, and that brings you to 440. And the smaller A to B, C to D, uh, come on. Let's see where we are in a Fibonacci on Microsoft. Yeah, pretty much right to the 318 almost. We're pretty remarkable if this market has A to B, C to Ds, and that pullback we got from July to September was your C to D leg across the board. I mean, you take a look at the NASDAQ 100, okay, just ballparking here. You traded from 11,000 to 16,000. You trade back down to 14,000. That puts you at 19,000, which is 2,000 points above where we're trading at right now, which is about a 12% increase from where we're trading at. And again, if you're looking at the same time frame, You're talking about a move that took you about seven months, and we're only two months into this move. So that'd be a move of about 12% over the next five months, going a little bit big picture. Seems like AI might be changing the game. 
you know, my dad was talking a lot about this. It makes a lot of sense, man. It's going to be tremendous the amount of productivity that this thing accomplishes. I, mean, I don't understand coding myself to any degree in terms of writing code. But just understanding that computers are going to be able to write code that is completely sophisticated, and that may be the biggest game changer of all. Coding and being able to build self-sustained generative AI websites with very little compensation that you have to pay employees and programmers to get that done. Um, and maybe we're seeing a generational type shift of the type of profitability that the market is looking for for some of these equities as we go forward and the growth that they're looking for. Pretty remarkable we're sitting here talking about the NASDAQ might have a um, 12% higher over the next five months after the run we've had, but that's that's where the ABCs are talking. Let's see how the Open is talking when we come back, folks. We'll be back in three minutes. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours, and now they are expanding their reach with the Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In the Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablet as well so it's always at your reach to sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders just visit the front page of tfnn.com Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN. Educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We got the markets open. You're looking at an S&P up by 35 points right now. NASDAQ 100, we're up by about 1%, up by 173, trading at 16,941. The Dow right now up by 238 points. That's a lift of about six right now. And jumping around, um, Warner Brothers Discovery and Paramount. So reported that they are in talks of potentially a merger 
you had David Zasloff meeting with Paramount Global CEO Bob Backish on Tuesday to discuss what a merger of the companies may look like. Interesting, right? As they try and get big, compete in that market, and they have some heft, man. You know, HBO Max, it's quite a price tag compared to some of the other products. But boy, they got some great programming, but no lift whatsoever on any of that news in terms of a merger. And that news came out, I think it was Wednesday, um, excuse me, I think I saw that report overnight Tuesday because it happened on Tuesday. Well, look at this pullback, right? Warner Brothers down 9 tenths percent. Paramount down 2.5 percent as the market charges higher. Disney shares up half a percent right now. You jump over to Netflix right now up 8 tenths percent. You know, it's just taking a look at Netflix during the break, right? Look at these companies. This is one of those companies, man. You know, all we're coming into right now is this consolidation area. To back this up a little bit further, that we traded in, not even cherry picking the 700 high before it collapsed, right? You're now just back in this area that you traded in from 2020 in July to basically August of 2021. That area was from about 475 upper boundary, about 564. But check it out this year, that same pattern, man. If this is ever, you're talking about from 170 up to maybe almost 470. Okay, that's a 300 point A to B leg. That's going to bring you almost to like 650. Not outlandish. Wouldn't even be making all time highs, right? And these are some of the companies, man. You know, markets pushing all time highs. But even if the Fang stocks don't take us there, you know, now Bill Huang did some bad things with these equities in terms of the prices that show up at the high being irrational highs. But even taking out the entirety of that year, you're still pushing an area of 20 to $24, and you're sitting at 11 for Warner Brothers Discovery. Paramount, Netflix, still sitting under 500 when you were trading above that price level for almost a year and nine months. You jump over to even Amazon shares, okay? Amazon, what do you do? You trade from 80 up to 145 that's a $65 A to B leg. You pull back to the 382, which is 120. The A to D takes you to about 185. Now, where is that? Basically the upper boundary line, right? I mean, that's even cherry picking two of the highs there, but 185 is just the A to B, C to D. And that, again, is over the period of about the next five or six months. Now, what's so interesting about that is that's when I see if there's any potential for problems, it might be then with the economy. Okay, the economy is fine right now. The only real worry is, is, is that on a bigger picture is that there's some lag that is sitting there. And I'm not saying this is not a worry in my opinion right now. Things seem pretty great, man. They do. Inflation's not going away, folks. Okay, they are bringing inflation back down. Everybody's in shock of the current prices of things. And you have to separate that from what the Fed sees, which is the interest rate from where we are right now going forward. If today going forward, we are at 2% growth and we're at 2% interest rate, right? They've reached their long-term growth objectives. They've re reached their reasonable price inflation number of 2%, and they're okay with that. They don't care that you got to pay X amount for your groceries every day, unfortunately, because they have low in inflation. They don't want those numbers to go back down. And we're right near those numbers right now. And you probably got some room to run in this market. When you look at so many good companies that are still well off the higher areas that they traded at. And why is that so? Well, that's so because you have companies like Apple trading at 196 when the all time highs from 2021 were about 175 or 180. Right. You get companies like NVIDIA trading at 500 once trading at 320 when things were going well, et cetera, well over where they're at. You got companies like Microsoft reached 384. You never got really above 340, even in the highs of that area, okay? Google hasn't might quite made it just yet, but they're basically sitting at all-time highs. But that's another great example of a company that probably has room to trade higher, man. I mean, Google, they've been plowing almost more money than anybody into generative, generative AI. They get the search business that they can lose, okay? But they've been plowing more money than almost anybody. Things have held up pretty well. It's going to be interesting to see how they factor in advertising into something like ChatGPT. Where are they going to fit those ads within that answer, right? Because Google, it's easy. They're showing you a list 
of search functions, search results, and they put the ads in between them. Well, if I just want chat GPT to write me some code, where does that ad come from? Interesting. But Google, not even at all-time highs, nonetheless. Um, but, yeah, so it would be interesting to see how this goes. I mean, I was looking at this last night, man. Warner Brothers Discovery, you know, Paramount has great stuff, too, but there's only one HBO, folks, okay? And take 78 out of the picture, probably take $40 out of the picture. $30 is going to be probably a ceiling for a while, but you're trading at $11 right now, man. You jump over to the Analyze tab on the Thinkorswim platform. Pull up Warner Brothers Discovery. And you're talking about a company right now, $27 billion. Quite a hefty price tag, but nonetheless, I think there's room eventually. You know, you're talking about $8 the low last year. Maybe you scale into this equity if you're looking for something. But we're only a few months away from a potential cut. And I feel like we have some legs on this market, and I feel like there might be a little bit of a rotation where some of these equities, and it might not necessarily be Warner Brothers, man, but these A to B, C to Ds that are setting up on equities that have not reached all-time highs yet, pretty powerful in the context of where we are in this market right now. All right, let's talk a little bit of new car sales. Car sales expected to tick up slightly next year. Increase between 1% and 4% is what the data firms are calling for. 15.6 to 16.1 vehicles would be the highest since 2019 when you had more than 17 million new cars. Pretty remarkable, right? Still not quite over COVID. Um, but yeah, supply has been an issue, of course. Sales of less than 14 million vehicles as COVID hit, the lowest in more than a decade in 2022. And look at how we're not even back, right? Look at those numbers, man. Pretty remarkable. When the forecast is 15.7, I don't think, you know, we hear about a lot of cars cars a lot but I don't think a lot of people know how far that number did down and how we're not even close to that number just yet what else we got oh this is a good one so let's say on streaming I planned on jumping to this article following the heels of the Warner Brothers discovery so NBC Universal okay Peacock Comcast this is another one I pulled up during the break that made me think about this for a moment okay we're going to finish this one up after the break comcast trades from 28 dollars up to almost 48 dollars that's a 20 point a to b leg you pull back to 40 bucks you get 20 you're right back to the highs of 2021 and we'll talk about how they're going to be streaming the nfl they're going to be doing it with no commercials in the fourth quarter to grow their audience. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with the Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In the Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders just visit the front page of tfnn.com you might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market you're going to need a crystal ball after all it's impossible to predict the future right like any endeavor in life before you decide it's impossible get some advice from the experts you might find that it's not so impossible after all for daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call Newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call Newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. 
the Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps up 33 points. We got the NASDAQ 100 up 142 right now. We check in on some of the FANG stocks, some of the Magnificent 7. Apple shares up about 9 tenths percent, up a buck 70. You back off the high at 197. NASDAQ, um, yeah, pretty much in line. You have the Russell leading the way right now, up basically more than just more than 1%, but everything else basically up just less than 1%. You jump over to Amazon shares. Yeah, they fell in the open. We got a little bit of a pullback on some of these big players, especially from that high. You jump over to Microsoft shares. No, nah, it's still up 8 tenths percent. See how Tesla's trading this morning? They go up 2 percent, but you do back off on the open. And we jump over to Comcast. So Comcast down about 2 tenths percent. Pretty interesting how this is going to play out. We jump over. And so they are going to be streaming games. They've got a game coming up, which is a pretty good game between – the Bills and the Chargers on Saturday. So because college football is in a little bit of a hold here, you're going to have the playoffs, but you don't have games going on on every Saturday right now. So then what happens is you get a few NFL games that make that into the Saturday routine on this week, I believe. So they're going to get the Bills versus the Chargers. Pretty good matchup. And then they have a playoff battle January 13th to, pre to be determined, of course. They paid $110 million to carry those games, okay? And what they're going to do is they're not going to play commercials during the fourth quarter. And that is going to cut 40% of the available ads that they have, 40% um, fewer ads. Now, think about it. Did you always feel like the end of the game takes a while? It's only 25% of the game, the fourth quarter, and they got 40% of the ads in there. Now you know why, right? Um Mark Marshall, chairman of NBC Universal's Global Advertising and Partnership Unit, said uh, the bosses get it when asked in terms of usually it's a cash machine. Advertisers love it. But guess what? They got to grow their service right now. They are a service. I think it's at $28 million. Let's see where they're at. I think it was $28 million viewers. Oh, come on. You're killing me. Okay, I'll find it. But nonetheless, uh, they need to grow on the heels of the Warner Brothers Discovery Paramount, right? They're not even close to those two in their own right. And I'll pull it up on the next break. I'll find it. I think they only have 30 million subscribers. So in that business, that basically means nothing. They're going to be trying to grow it. And their differentiator is sports. That's their deal. And um, yeah, it's probably a great route to take. There it is, 28 million subscribers. Okay. So Peacock, 28 million subscribers. Yeah, a minnow in the ocean of streamers, as they say. Now, right now, they have the NFL, Big Ten College Sports, English Premier League Soccer, Golf, and the Tour de France. But guess what? 
the NFL, there's only one NFL, man. That's the big deal out there. And if they start doing stuff like this, I mean, that catches my eye. I, I haven't pulled up Peacock ever. And guess what, folks? When that playoff game is going on, I'm going to figure out a way to watch that game probably, especially the playoff game. Maybe the Saturday game too. I'm not sure, depending on how that works. I don't even know. But guess what? We're talking about them. And so I think it's a smart play. Live sports is something else, man. And that's going to be the next foray. You see all the speak about potentially, you know, Dan Ives from Wedbush. He thinks that Apple is going to buy ESPN. Sports is the next foray. I'm not sure Disney's going to give them up because they have their own streaming platform and it seems somewhat counterintuitive that Apple is going to poach that to drive ESPN's ability for sports because force there's this I mean think about it folks when I think about it okay now I have kids in the house so everybody watches their own thing but if I was just watching it for myself okay I would never subscribe to more than one streaming service at a time if you want to great it's a luxury but you're really not missing out on anything. Maybe you want to watch those shows that are released weekly. They're doing some of that to you. HBO does that especially as well. So you just can't come in, binge everything, and cancel. But many of the services you can. Okay, Netflix, there's no reason why you have to subscribe every single week. right? You could easily watch Netflix for a month, cancel that, watch a different service. Point being, none of that can happen with sports. Because it's sports, you need to watch it live. There's no point in watching that game even two hours after it's over because the whole world's already reacting to it. You want to know what's happening live. There's only one thing that exists like that, and it's live sports. So it's going to be interesting to see how it plays out, but Peacock kind of making that entry. And when you look at an equity like Comcast, now not today as you're down about three-tenths percent. But, yeah, you have some room. Like I just talked about, an A to B leg that's $20. Your C point brings you back to about 40 and that would bring you pushing the highs of 2021. And that is the highs. Yeah, we bump up against where we were in 2020 earlier this year. So keep your eye on some of these equities, man. You know, when I'm just talking about it would just take A to B legs to bring us back to all-time highs. And that might be the reason that this market has some legs because there are room on some of the equities that haven't even reached all-time highs. And I'm talking about good equities. All right, what else do we got pulled up here? Let's take a look. What do we got? We could talk a little real estate. Yeah, so the U.S. and China, this went out from the journal this morning. Um, U.S. and China military start talking again after a dangerous rupture. You had a video call between the generals, follow a summit agreement between President Biden and President Xi. What was also said at that meeting that just came out, I think, recently was that President Xi told Biden straight out that he is going to unify Taiwan with China. It's happening. So, thing that we're talking, it's always a good thing to be talking to a foe. It really is. Um, especially one where you could have a nuclear battle. And We're not talking about finance, but it's, it's, it's talking is not a bad deal. But I don't know how that hump we get over in terms of them unifying Taiwan that leads us how geopolitical tensions exist at that point you're seeing Apple moving a lot of their production out of China to India I feel like that is going to become a focal point and that China is going to not back down and I don't know how that plays out but nonetheless they're trying to sue things right now they have some problems with their economy and they're not uh, able to be just as bold as they may want to be as the years go forward, but that's not always going to be the case. Yeah, unify, invade, exactly, Jimmy, you know. Um, so keep that in mind that that's what he told Biden, because that didn't really get a lot of press. Um, it wasn't out there at first, but nonetheless, it is now. All right, what else we got on here? Yeah, just talking bills. I mean, we could go through it, but the headline almost speaks for itself as you jump through some of the numbers, though, man. Look at this. Holiday retail sales. Man, Americans love the holidays. $929.5 billion. And that spans the months of November and December, which I say is pretty fair right about now. And it's only declined once. 
falling 5% between 2007 and 2008 when the whole financial crisis in the world was falling apart. We'll talk a little bit more about this. We'll talk a little bit more about some of the other equities moving this morning, folks. We'll take a look at some of those CPI numbers as well. We'll be back to finish up the show. Don't go away. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter, a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We have the S&Ps up almost 38 points right now. We're trading at 47.87. You get a little bit of an acceleration on those numbers at 8.30. We drive to a high of almost 47.90. As we get into the open, we're sitting at 47.86. NASDAQ 100 up about 9 tenths percent. You get the Dow up 6 tenths percent right now. And the Russell leading the way up by 26 points. Jumping back to that story, talking a little bit of spending and the headline here is that Americans spending less on gifts and more on everything else. Services is what they're talking about here, okay? But with the holiday chart, it's pretty remarkable. 15 straight years is what it is, man. 15 straight years. The last year it went down was 2008. It's 2023. That's 15 years. And, yeah, it's went up every single year since then. This also... So one statistic I wanted to bring up, 40% of Gen Z and millennials expect to go into debt just to make it through the holidays. Pretty remarkable, man. I mean, the financing options such as buy now, pay later are firm. We're going to pull up right in a moment. Most 
22% of online sales over Black Friday and Cyber Week, up 25% from last year. Now, here's a perfect example. That's such a distorting. I mean, it is it's it is what it is, okay? They're citing a percentage on a percentage, which was very small, okay? So that's only talking about going, folks, from 6 to 7.2%, maybe from what, 59 to 7.2 is a 25% increase, okay? But it doesn't sound as startling. Great example of how percentage is on small numbers. Nonetheless, it is a 25% increase going from about 5.9% of sales to 7.2%. And we'll finish up the show taking a look at a firm. And yeah, they're going to be able to be at checkout at Walmart. I saw um, a meme yesterday. Pretty remarkable. Um, talking about, you know, financing a Domino's pizza. Nonetheless, we got a firm up 5% again today. Keep your eye on that one, man. Folks, thanks so much for tuning in. Don't forget about Basil Chapman's webinar, folks. Sign up for the opening call. The archive of the webinar will be up there. Basil puts out a great subscriber video for his subscribers over the weekend as well. You can get access to it all. Comes up with their payment, I guarantee. Uh, okay. Talk to you tomorrow morning, folks.